Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. It's a new week. We are very, very happy to welcome you to a new edition of our show titled Speak of Africa. How is Africa doing this week? We're going to try to look at the news, then present it to you. You have to understand that Africa is not an island. Africa is functioning in a global village. Whatever is happening in Washington affects our people in the motherland. So it's very important that when we present the news, we present it in a very geopolitical perspective, which is what we always try to do, so that you can really understand the way every, all the parts fit in. It's a system. You cannot just isolate one component, then thinking that the whole will continue working. We have a lot of news for you, but before we start with the news, we want to say thank you to all our subscribers. Our numbers keep increasing, and we are closing in on the number 20,000 subscribers. You are doing it, and we'll continue to ask you to share the show with your friends and family. Let's get to this 20,000 number of subscribers. It looks like before the mid of May, we're going to get to that number. But the earlier you do more work, we'll get to the number sooner. So keep calling your friends, telling them to subscribe to this show. Okay? If this is the first time you are watching our show, we invite you to subscribe. When you subscribe, you make sure that you do not miss a video. Then our customers, we cannot thank you enough. You are the ones helping us to finance this show. Every week, with the money we make from you, we're able to pay for the upkeep of this show. Especially, we also like to thank Bitech 97 you are offering very, very good classes, and the classes are beginning now. So if you don't know about Bitech 97, we've been talking about them almost every week on this show. We're encouraging you to take the classes they are offering. Bitech97.com. Go to the website and register for the class. You can become a cloud DBA. You have AWS, Amazon. You have Microsoft Azure. You have Oracle. And you have cybersecurity. So change your life today. Go to bitech97.com and register for the classes. We also want to give thanks to our new supporter. The new supporter of this show is Divine Urgent Care. We are helping them now to operate a new clinic in Bethesda, Maryland. Bethesda, Maryland is a very rich area of uh, the Washington metropolitan area. It's not very far from Potomac. It is a very high end uh, zip code. So this is where we are placing Divine Urgent Care. It's a new facility, and we wrote the business plan for them, and we are executing the marketing plan as we speak. We've started by building their website. You're going to see uh, pictures of the work we're doing. Soon they will be operational. Probably in 30 or 90 days, the clinic will be fully operational. By the end of May, everything will be ready for action and we really want them to fight and win. What we do in business is we try to get them to use our software and intelligence. We are like the United States of America. We are very aggressive in our marketing and our business. To us, business is like warfare. We try to make sure that our clients win. In fact, we are borrowing a page from Bill Gates of Microsoft's uh, playbook. This is how Bill Gates was able to break the competitors into pieces and win the war during the early 80s and late 90s. So we just want to emulate the model of Bill Gates. That's how we're building Alexa HTC technology. We want to make sure that we put this technology in every medical facility in the United States in a year or two. We're starting now with a lot of clinics in the Washington metro metropolitan area. Before you know it, our technologies are going to be in all the 50 states of the Union. And we have the ambition and the drive to make this happen. So we're having a lot of clients. They are signing up. So if you are a doctor and you have a practice or you want to start a new practice, it behooves you to contact us to get our technology. If you want to win, you need to be with a winning team. We are the winning team. So you want to contact us. My number is 240 350-1131. After this announcement, 
we are ready now to start with our book review segment. We've told you that in order to appreciate the world today, you need to read. If you do not read, it's like you are dead. Keep your brains active. We're going to suggest three books for you to read this week. The first book is by Paul Kennedy, The Rise and Fall of the Great Powers. Okay? The, this is a good book which really tells you the two causes that lead to the rise and fall of great powers. One is economic change. When we talk about economic change, we are referring to technology. The countries that are always improving on their technology, such as the United States, are always going to win. They are always going to rise. When you look at the emergence of the US during the Second World War, the rise has to do with technology, technological improvements. Similarly, the Soviet Union also emerged as a leader after the Second World War because of the technology that was created by Stalin, Joseph Stalin. Okay? So you can see that technological change leads to superiority among the nations. So the nations that rise are driven by technological change or economic change. When the economy improves because of its use of technology, the country rises. By contrast, countries that don't have technology collapse, they fall. And that's exactly what this book is telling us. African countries can learn a whole lot of lessons from the book by Paul Kennedy. Another factor is military conflict and competitiveness. If you have to succeed, if you have to rise as a nation, you have to be competitive in a military sense. You have to have better weapons than your competitor. And America has taught us this lesson in so many ways. America stays ahead. In America, you always have new and improved. They don't settle on their laurels. They always like to keep improving so that they can do better. When they get into the fight, they always emerge victorious because they have technology that makes it possible for them to compete. They can compete militarily and vanquish their opponents. The same is happening in the conflict we see now in Ukraine. Ukraine is a small country. It used to be part of the Soviet Union. Russia invaded Ukraine. With the help of the United States and NATO allies, Ukraine is able to fight back a very dominant oppressor, which is Russia. Why is Ukraine able to fight back? People were expecting Ukraine to collapse in a few days. It did not happen because the people of Ukraine know that they are fighting for survival. They are fighting for their lives, so they have been resisting. And NATO has been providing them a lot of support. So May 9 is the day Vladimir Putin is supposed to declare victory for Russia. This is going to be a very big disappointment. Okay? So this is what works. By the end of this conflict, Russia is going to be reduced to no more one of the great powers. We will not be calling Russia a great power anymore. So the bipolar world is going to change. So America will remain the unique. So for Africans, do not be guided by sentiments. We are a big news organization. We understand world politics. And we see the way things are working themselves out. If you are an African leader, when you watch this show, we are here trying to guide you the way you hedge your bets. Russia is a dark horse. Don't bet on that horse because you're going to lose. If you're betting on Russia the way uh, the president of Cameroon, Paul Bia, is betting on Russia, you're making a wrong decision. And your people are going to pay the price. So, we've talked about the first book by Paul Kennedy. But we have other books by our fellow Africans. They contacted us to share news about the publication of books about uh, Africa. The second book we're going to discuss with you is from a writer from Uganda, Isaac Sebakije. He wrote a book on contemporary best eye view of Africa, where he uses COVID-19 as a conversation starter. He uses this for us to start talking. How did COVID-19 affect Africa? This is the way Mr. Isaac Sebakije wants us to start the discussion in his book. So he uses 
COVID-19 as a subject that we can start discussing. Then from there, it takes us on a panorama. We, walk, we look at the whole background of African history and African problems, African aspirations. What can lead Africa to emerge as a continent from a, the death trap to freedom from death? That's a major question Isaac Sebakija is asking in this book. How can the continent emerge from being trapped in a lot of debt to becoming debt free and prosperous? He tackles so many subjects and we think we should really read the book so that we can really understand most of the subjects he's raising in this book. There are so many items that you need to know about, so many topics which are really germane to what is happening to us today. We don't have much time to go into a lot of the stuff on the book. So we just tell you, go to Amazon, look at the name Isaac Sebakija. He's a writer from Uganda. We've really been communicating with him and we want many Africans to read this book. Of course, you should know, Uganda is a country that has really been suffering from dictatorship for a very long time. Starting with the dictatorship of Idi Amin to the present dictatorship of uh, Yoware Museveni. You should know him. So, so the people are really suffering and we feel sorry for the people of Uganda, but with expressing confidence that we are with them. The third book we're going to recommend to you is written by a southern Cameroonian by the name Samuel Pani. Samuel Pani, A Journey of My Life. The book is like a memoir. So he comes from the western region of Cameroon, but he had to leave his hometown because of poverty to Victoria, which is in the southwest area of the southern Cameroons. And that's where he went to school. Then eventually, he became an administrator. He worked with Amadou Aijo, the first president of La République du Cameroon. Then eventually, uh, he retired and is living in the United States. So his book gives us a mirror. We can really see what life was like during those colonial uh, days. And we can really learn from that. So we're asking you to look at all these three books. But after you look at the three books, we think we're now ready to begin our new segment. With the news of today, we'll take you straight to the new state of Ambazonia. What are we trying to accomplish? Well, the people of Ambazonia do not have to despair. We really want to give them a whole lot of uh, hope. A lot of uh, actions are taking place in international politics. Now that the BIA government has begun uh, work on working with Russia, things are going to be very good for um, the people of Ambazonia. Things are going to change quite a bit because what's going to happen? Already, the Biden administration has given the temporary protected status to the people of Ambazonia, even though he uses Cameroon in general, but we know he's really referring to the people of Ambazonia. This week, we really got a lot of bad news that we've heard of Guzang many times on this show. Guzang massacre. More people were killed in Guzang. And you guys sent out the videos to talk about it. And we feel sorry for the people who lost their lives. The military guys from La Republic du Cameroon went to Guzang and killed more people. But what was even worse was their actions in Oku. Over 40 bike, rider, uh, bike riders, we have pictures of them to show you. They were summarily picked up and taken to hidden locations to be tortured and killed. They were labeled restoration fighters, when in fact, these are normal people who work hard every day, but they were arrested by the elements from Bia's army who picked them up. You have so many pictures of the guys, young people. So we're asking the mothers and fathers of these children, protest, don't sit quietly and allow your kids to be killed because you will not see them again. So please rise and protest against the Republic of Cameroon. Let them free these innocent children. Do that for the sake of your children. Then again in Ambazonia, we've been talking to you about Doctors Without Borders, Les Médecins Sans Frontières. Usually these guys take a vow in the medical profession to treat all 
victims. They don't care whether you are on the left side, whether you're on the right side, but it looks like the BR government is giving them hell because they complain that uh, these uh, doctors are treating Ambazonian who are sick. How can a callous government like this prevent doctors from treating people who are sick just because they call them Amber Boys? Doctors are supposed to treat anybody irrespective of their political uh, inclination. It doesn't matter whether they are B or whether they are Amber Boys. They should be treated. But the Medicine Sound Frontier doctors have been really having a tough time to operate in the southwest uh, area of the country. So the BR government sends talks to make them not work properly in this part of the world. So a lot of time they have to stop their work. So it's been a pattern. They keep harassing them. Sometimes some of them have been killed. So this is really sad. And we have this news is over the uh, media, social media. You can read about it too. So this is not good. Then what about myth first? Is the BR government celebrating? La Republique is not really celebrating. And from what we gather, it looks like uh, Mr. Bia is really a dying king. After <laughs> the Cannes uh, football fest, he's spending a lot more time in his village, and we hear he's really sick, and we don't know how long he's going to live. We don't wish anybody ill, but the fact is this dude is seriously ill, so people are now struggling for power. So it looks like there's a talk of war going on. You have the wife and Ngongo on the one side, then you have people who are supporting Frank on the other side, trying to struggle for supremacy. Who is going to take over from Mr. Beer? So this is what is really happening, and we're drawing attention to it. So you know that Mr. Beer now is just like uh, someone who has really lost his mind. He cannot really think. So a lot of things are happening. He doesn't even know what is happening. So they just have to tell him, and he, don't, he has lost his memory pretty much. So it's very, very sad. But... That's what happens to dictators. If you want to rule until you die, that's what you get. So we cannot really feel sorry for you because you are responsible for your fate. It's the same way we're telling you that Vladimir Putin is responsible for his fate. By making a deal with Vladimir Putin, you're making a big mistake. You're playing Russian roulette. This guy is going to lose. The way we see things, Vladimir Putin is really losing the war in Ukraine. And the big powers are all behind the United States of America, except from China, which is playing a dirty game. But soon they will bring China to the fore, because China has a big market. But without the US economy, China is nothing. And China knows that, because America will just need to push the button and say, China, either behave or we kick you out. We will not buy your goods. And the whole Chinese economy will collapse. China knows that. As much as you're spending a whole lot of money on weapons, but America can shut the tap, then the oil will stop flowing. The oil money will stop flowing. So China has to be where. Next, we go to Burkina Faso. Hey, yo, Shay, I thought you was going to take me to this place so I could get my taxes done. You know I'm trying to buy a new house. What's up? Let's get it on. If you're searching for a house, call up my man Prince Ojon, the best in real estate. Take it from your guy's shape. When I say his services are the best in the states where he's born, he even take care of your tax forms, fat refunds. So come, get your business done. Consultations, financial organization, fast processing, no way. And this man is amazing, the Prince. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Burkina Faso also has a whole lot of problems. Even after the new uh, leadership, we, we had a story, the flood in the minefield, there are a lot of people who are trapped under, and it looks like uh, the rescue team is very, very slow in getting them out. So the families are really afraid. It looks like time is not on our side. We may lose these miners. And the problem with most of this African mine is that there's very, very little safety. So the rescue guys are struggling to pump this water out so that 
the flood should not overwhelm the miners who are on the ground. But if they don't do this fast enough, we're going to lose those miners. So it's really sad, and we think action should be taken quickly to rescue these miners. Next, we move to the Central African Republic. The Central African Republic is making a very, very big mistake. They are siding with Russia. And of, of course, you know that Putin is just like a character in a Shakespearean play. We look, we look at Vladimir Putin as a tragic hero. The Central African Republic is siding with Vladimir Putin. And Putin is basically the ones guaranteeing the security of uh, the government of Tuadera Ashange. But there is insecurity. Russia is not supporting the people. Russia is only supporting the leader. So when Russia talks about the Wagner Group, the Wagner Group is there to support the leadership, not the average citizen of the Central African Republic, which is why there is an acute refugee problem in the Central African Republic. A lot of Africans who love Russia, I know they are crying. They are crying for Vladimir Putin of Russia. We know that. But this is an emotional cry. What we know, Russia did not really play a colonial role in Africa. We know that. We know African history very well. But to start supporting Russia against America, because America also did not have any colonies in Africa, for your information. The only truth about this is, America is a leader of the free world. You may not like it, but you have to deal with it. You cannot escape and just make noise. That's the fact. America is a leader of the, the world, so if you don't want to deal with that fact, then it means you are just naive. We are telling our African leaders to understand this fact and play their cards accordingly so that their countries can benefit. Just telling us that, oh, I don't like America, I like by Russia, Russia is going to lose. So when we look at what is happening in Ukraine, we think the days of Vladimir Putin are numbered. Vladimir Putin actually is just like Adolf Hitler. Right now, he's living in a bunker. Do you guys remember the last days of Adolf Hitler? The Nazi guy? Putin is going to end up the same way. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a tragedy. In a tragedy, I remember when we used to read Shakespeare, the tragedy is that Putin's pr pride ambition is really his undoing. It is not somebody who caused the problem for him. He caused the problem himself because he wants to restore the grandeur of the Soviet empire. This is something that we think is a miscalculation because it's failing already. So as a tragic hero, who is responsible for Putin's undoing? It's not America. It's Putin himself. So this is not providence. Providence did not push Putin to invade Ukraine. He did this because of his pride, because he doesn't have a good sense of danger. And the Central African Republic is with him. So we think this is a mistake. Next, we move to Guinea. It looks like the military junta under Mamadi Dumbuya has started charting a path for the return to civilian rule, which probably may take at least 39 months. Are the people ready for this? Maybe not. Finally, we go to Nigeria. This is where we're going to end. When you look at Nigeria today, much of the talk is about May 2023. They are looking at the presidential elections. Who is going to succeed Mohamedou Buhari? That's the biggie that everybody is talking about. That's the big news. It will stay big for a very long time. Already, we've seen a lot of signs within the ruling cabal. It looks like they are trying to sell J Good Luck Jonathan, the former uh, president, to Mohamedou Buhari as a new candidate, agreeable by both parties, the APC and PDP. But is that going to work? Well, a lot of people are saying that, <laughs> that it's a big if. In fact, Jonathan is not really well loved. For someone who lost the election last time, now the Buhari cabal is saying, oh no, he's the best uh, replacement for Buhari. It looks like the people may not really buy this lie, which is why you can see Bola Tinibu and Yemi Osinbajo campaigning feverishly. Already, we are seeing that their campaign is taking a religious tone. Whereas, 
Bola Tinubu is appealing to the Muslims. It looks like he even went to Mecca to win votes for himself within the Islamic community. By contrast, Austin Bajo came from the Redeemed Church with uh, Pastor Enoch, Enoch Adeboye as the overseer. So you can see now that the conflict is becoming religious. You have Christianity versus Islam. This is the undertone that we want to draw your attention to. Redeem is a very popular church worldwide. Some people even speculate that this church may be richer than Nigeria. So, Bola, Otin, uh, Bola Tinubu is playing with a very big power. So, is the conflict now going to be between Islam and Christianity? That's a question on a lot of minds. Because you can see that most of the, the guys are jockeying for power. Even uh, Yemi Osinbajo is really winning a favor from the Christian community. So, we're just thinking that this uh, conflict is taking a very religious turn. And we know that if this happens, there may be occasions where this will be prone to a lot of religious violence. And I don't think Nigeria needs this. Religious violence can even result in the breakup of Nigeria. So the leaders need to be very, very careful. We don't know whether the leaders are really paying attention, but this is what we are observing. If they don't take special care, this conflict will really result in a lot more killings among the populace. And we just want to warn the leaders so that they can take action to avoid bloodshed. Because we are really worried that if this uh, contest becomes religious, as it is already becoming, it will not be good for Nigeria. If we, they can do something to avert this conflict, it will be a very good thing for even the two candidates. We've come to the end of our show, and we're telling you, please support this show Russia is playing Russian roulette. If you're an African country, be careful if you are supporting Russia because you are supporting the wrong country. In this contest, we are thinking that America is going to win. So if you support the loser, what are you going to get when the conflict is over? You're not going to get anything. For the good of your country, do not be emotional. Russia certainly did not colonize any countries in Africa. So be careful. Support America, the winner of the Cold War 2.0. Thank you very much. Medical practice software is too old. Indeed, all the programs are built on mumps, technology of the 1950s. And the programs cost too much money. Epic and Cerner cost billions of dollars. Meditech costs thousands of dollars too. In fact, that's why we created AlexiHTC.com, a new and free EMR slash EHR for doctors. AlexiHTC.com is built for HIPAA. Yes, magical one screen technology, ease of use, quick charting, amazing e prescribing, tight labs integration, multi office difference, because we believe doctors and patients need a break today. Be the first to test drive AlexiHTC.com. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. Act now. Call 240-350-1131. Alexia Care Corporation at AlexiaHTC.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.